Hi there, good afternoon. Welcome to our special state of emergency edition of the daily video reflections sponsored by the Jesuit community. Glad you could be here today. Today's gospel is taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 22. Jesus again in reply spoke to them in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants saying, tell those who are invited, behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed and everything is ready, come to the feast. Now some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, and the rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them and killed them. Now the king was enraged and sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And then he said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. And the servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, the bad and the good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. And he said to him, my friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But the man was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, bind his hands and feet and cast him out into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. The gospel of the Lord. The king in this parable that Jesus tells uh, seems like a pretty mean guy. He sends his troops out to murder the people who were invited to this wedding feast that he was having. Uh, he seems like he's pretty harsh and, and he's got kind of a, a quick trigger. But actually, if we delve a little deeper into this parable, we see that this is a parable about God's mercy, about the wideness of God's mercy. And God's mercy is there for everybody, no matter who you are. It's important, first of all, to note that Jesus was telling this parable, not, to the, not just to the crowds in general, but he was directing this parable at the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees were a religious group in Jesus' time, and they were, they were good men, good prayerful men, who loved God very much. And they understood that if by following the law, that's their way of loving God. And so for them, obedience to the law was key. Unfortunately, there were times when that was taken to extremes, where their obedience to the law uh, was really uh, more important than showing mercy to people. And Jesus would always go after them because the law itself talks about mercy. But here these guys were, claiming to follow the law, but they weren't being very merciful to people. And so Jesus is addressing this parable to them. He's also addressing this parable to you and me. He's addressing this parable to those places in our own hearts where maybe we get a little, we're a little judgmental. He's addressing us uh, in those moments when we think we have it all figured out. We think that we have the, the truth right here in the palm of our hands and we can therefore uh, judge who is a sinner and who's not a sinner. Uh, so what's beautiful about this parable is that when the, the first set of guests, the ones who were invited, which in this case represent the Pharisees, the religious authorities, the ones who should have known better, uh, the king sends his servants out into the streets and they bring everybody in. And the hall is filled to capacity. And the text says that it was filled with the good and the bad alike. So it wasn't just the good people. Who came in. It wasn't just the religious people who got to come in. It wasn't just the ones who said their prayers that got to come in, but even the bad people got to come in. The sinners, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, everyone was welcomed at this feast and everyone was allowed to come into the feast and enjoy the feast, right? Now that's important for us to keep in mind because if you're like me, that you were probably raised with, a, with this idea that um, if we're good, if we say our prayers, if we go to church on Sundays, if we do all the right things, then we're going to go to heaven. But if we're bad, if we do the wrong things, if we're sinners, then we go to hell. But this parable is actually saying something very different. It says that this, this wedding feast, which is usually a symbol of heaven in the scriptures, this wedding feast is for everyone. 
that God's mercy is that wide that even if you're not doing the right things, guess what? The wedding feast is open to you. You got an invitation. You can come on in. Now, a lot of us would find that a little shocking, but we might be surprised who we find living next door to us when we get to heaven. Right. So this is this is God's mercy and God's mercy is for all people, the good and the bad alike. OK, then what do you do with this last scene in the gospel? Right. Which is where the king walks into the feast and he sees one man there who is not dressed appropriately and he gets thrown out. What do you do with that? All right. So we don't know if that man who got thrown out, we don't know if he was one of the good ones or one of the bad ones. But it would seem that regardless, he didn't take this invitation to the banquet very seriously. He didn't dress appropriately. Maybe he was just going in for the free meal and he thought he could get away with that. Nope. That there has to be a change, right? There has to be a change. That God invites all of us to the feast but there has to be change. We have to we have to change not just not our garments, but we have to change our hearts. Right. And, and that's true for all of us, whether you think you're good or whether you think you're bad. All of us need to change. OK, so what does this leave us with? Well, there, there are just two takeaways that I want to leave with you. Number one, that God's mercy is wide. God's mercy is infinite. There's no end to God's mercy. There's nothing you or I could ever do. No sin that we could commit that would put us outside of God's mercy. If we want, God's right there waiting for us. The banquet is prepared and we're welcome to come inside, right? So that's the first takeaway. And if you really think about that, that really turns on its ear how a lot of us were raised as Catholics. And the second takeaway is this, I'm not in a position to judge. I'm not in a position to judge you. I'm not in a position to judge those people out there who are sinners. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not able to say who God is going to welcome into heaven and who God's not going to welcome into heaven. And really what I need to do is I need to pay attention to myself and I need to pay attention to whether or not I'm willing to change because all of us have to change in order to enter this feast. So just a few thoughts for you. Hope you enjoy it. Take care.